shed and we're going to skin a mink and we're going to stretch the mink. First thing I do is I just take a side cutters, I cut up the front feet. You don't have to, you can always just skin it as is, but I prefer to just cut them off. So here's a side cutter, I just take it, I cut just a hair up from that joint, throw the feet to the side. If I had a gut bucket, I'd throw them in the gut bucket. So that's the first step. And then from there, from there, I put it in my little wall clip. Take my knife. I just use an 8 inch Victoria Knox fillet knife. Cut it around the ankle. Oh, I got a little piece in there. There we go. That'll stay. Cut it around the ankle. When I come from this side, stick my knife in. I just cut straight across. And from there, start peeling the legs back. Got a little meat attached. Let's just kind of unhook that meat. And then on the mink, right around the anus or the vent, whatever you want to call it. Right there, there are two glands, so if you skin inside like a laundry room in your basement, be careful. You don't want to puncture those. That smell will stay around for just a little while in your house. I got a shop, so I ain't too worried if I hit them or not. So I just come from that cut, and then I make a straight line behind the anus, and then I come back and I do the same thing. It'll just form a little V. And then from there, the front side, you know, just kind of use your thumb and just work your thumb around. Push your thumb down between the meat and the fur. Now I got my fingers worked out back underneath the tail. Have to do a little cut in here, got a little meat attached. There we go. Now we got the tailbone exposed. Take a small hole on a tail stripper. Just debone that. And from there, it's pretty simple. It just pulls out, rolls like a sock. I grab right behind the shoulders, keep pulling. Then we got the front legs exposed, and then just like skinning a muskrat, take your thumb, stick it between the leg and the, the fur. Don't have to worry about the foot, it's already cut off. Now that's done. Then we pull up to the ears, and then the ear will be exposed right there, cut back, other side, cut back, pull to the eyes, and just cut around the eyes, get those to come out. I come side of the mouth, Cut on the side of the mouth, get that to break loose. Didn't get the side, there you go. It's kind of hard to do this in such a way to show the camera and focus on skinning, but we're getting her. There you go, cut the nose, break that loose. Then we just take the bottom lip. We cut the bottom lip off, it serves no purpose. And there you go. That's scum. Now we got the fur. When I take the fur, it goes first side in, 
I just slide it onto a board. This is a female mink, so we're using a female board. Just pull down tight. From there, I don't have the tail stripped, so then from there, I take my fillet knife, make sure that tail's straight, and I just stick it in, and I just slowly split it with my knife. You can use a carpet blade on a utility knife. You can use a tail stripper. I mean, there's a lot of different options out there. I just keep it simple. I try not to use too many tools. But, there you go. Now that's stripped. And then I just use my simple one-handed flushing tool. Start on the back, up to the shoulders, get the extra meat off of the saddle. Work my way down, get all the extra meat that was at the base of the hips. I don't do a lot of mink, so I don't have a, a perfect setup for doing this. This is just kind of what works for me with the few mink that I handle. All the mink that I catch, they're all incidentals and other traps. I don't purposefully trap them, so this one was caught in a bobcat box. Usually I catch them in my muskrat sets. So I've caught one in a beaver trap before. Turn it around, then underneath the front legs, there's a little extra meat, a little bit of fat. Pull that down, get the excess stuff off of the skirt, plus around the groin. I just kind of turn it slightly. The same thing with the other. It doesn't take much work to do this. A pretty simple animal to put up. little tiny bit on this side and that is that. So in the first pin that I put on I put one right above the nose just so it dries in place right there it doesn't shrink back. When I pull it back pull it around let me pull the tail out and then the legs we pin the legs on the back Put the, the pins on each side of the tail. As many pins as you think you need. This one I'm just going to do two. Doesn't matter too much. I'm not shipping. I sell to a country buyer. If you ship, there's little shipping secrets out there on how to get the most bang for your buck when they grade it at the, the auction house. But I'm not too worried about that. At the end of the day, it tans all the same. I'm trying to lay the tail flat, open it up. With the mink, what I do is I lay it flat. Well, I got this little piece of mesh right here. Just a simple piece of hardware cloth. Try to center that tail the best we can. I just lay that flat. And I put six pins angled in to hold it down, two on top, two in the middle, three on each side, however you want to look at it. Some people pleat their tails, I don't really care to do that. A lot of extra work for my buyer don't care. If you're tanning it, then it really don't matter. But at the end of the day, you gotta know what your buyer wants. That's what it all boils down to. So I got that tail pinned. You can always just pin it out with the pins themselves. Like I said, it don't really matter. Then the front. You don't have to pin the legs. I do. I have no idea why. I just like the look of it. I take one pin in the hole. I don't pin it through the leather. I just pin it in the hole. Do each one, put them at about the same height, and then I take one and I pull down. There you go, that's how I do that. Nothing too special. 
one pin on top, four pins for the legs, four pins for the skirt, six pins for the, the tail. And then all said and done when it comes to drying, I just take it and I hang it by the mouth. You don't have to hang it, that's just what I do. Sometimes people put little hooks on the bottom of their stretchers, they'll hang them by the hooks on the bottom of their stretchers, drill holes, hang by the holes on the bottom of their stretchers. I mean there's loads of different options. That's how I do it. But thanks for watching.